Oh, I've had too many noodles. <coughs> well, I've never seen that before. It's pulled its back leg back round and it's sort of cleaning it with its petapalps there, look. How cool is that? There is a cricket in the enclosure. Sadly, I think the cricket's a little bit too large for the spider. It's a sort of small to medium sized cricket. I do have some of the sort of small micro crickets on order at the moment, but I thought I'd give it a try. It's obviously really comfortable in its enclosures. You know, it's giving itself a good old clean. It is beautiful. Here comes that cricket. Now I'm wondering what's going to happen here. Let me zoom out slightly, guys. The spider's tracking it. The cricket is going around the other side of the water bowl and the spider's down here. Got it. Whoa. Did you see that? And that was a really large cricket for that size. So obviously, when the uh, the micro crickets come, I will be feeding it that. But that was absolutely awesome. I think the spiders got it, and the spiders upside down. Just going to watch it for a little bit. I just want to make sure that the spider's safe, you see. Obviously, the only thing that the cricket can sort of do is bite the spider, but the spider's got the cricket from above. And it will be envenomating it now. So this is your um, wolf spider, which is a true spider. The cricket's trying to put up a fight. Uh, these are a um, arid spider. They like to live in an arid environment. 
There we go, the spider's got it now, got it the right way up. They're like an arid environment, quite dry. But try and remember, although they like an arid environment, doesn't mean they don't need water. So provide a water bowl, guys. They will probably get quite a lot of fluid from their kill. This one will get quite a lot from this one because it's such a big um, cricket again because I looked in my pot for the smallest cricket I had and that is the smallest one. So you can see that this spider does require the small micro crickets. But it's already... Um, Taking it away, look to somewhere quiet and dark so it can eat it. Again, it probably to feel safe, it will take itself to somewhere dark. Don't know if I can, you can see that there. Yeah. And there's some webbing there as well. This was a really big meal for this spider. So this spider probably won't need to eat now for. A good few days unlike the uh, tarantulas it is recommended to feed these every couple of days because these are more inquisitive they're faster they move about more they like to explore their environment they eat more than the spite than the tarantula would now you might think that this environment is too big for this spider I'll tell you now, it's not, because I spoke to, before getting the spider, I spoke to a few collectors in the hobby of wolf spiders, because you know what I'm like, I like to research, and they said no, this environment, which is like a 20 centimetre um, circumference cylinder, is perfect for this for a true spider, a wolf spider of this size. This is also perfect for a large wolf spider. But they said even for this one, which is the uh, Hogner Radiator, it's still a good size because they like to explore the area and they will utilize the whole area. I've had it a day and the spider has been up on here. It's been around the back. It's hang out around the water bowl. I think it sort of turned this little hide down there. Um, that's got a hide and it's taken the food under the hide there. Uh, it, I've seen it on this plant. It has actually used the whole enclosure. So this, although for a, a, a tarantula of this size, this enclosure would be way, way, way too big. But for a true spider, a wolf spider, or like a huntsman, this is perfect. These are a terrestrial species. Um, they don't live very long. 12 to 18 months, um, I would say, is probably the maximum you'll get a life out of one of these. If you're lucky, a bit longer. Like I told you, they like a, a dry, arid environment. They like to be by the water bowl. They eat small to, well, yeah, small to micro size food like crickets or the little mealworms. Um, are they good beginner species? No, totally not a good beginner species. If you're just getting into spiders, I would avoid um, the wolf spiders and huntsmen, not for any other reason apart from their speed. They are so fast, they really are. Now, if you want a, a beginning true, uh, true spider, I would go with a velvet spider or possibly a jumping spider, but be wary, jumping spiders are also very fast. But as a beginner species, no, but if you... We've got some experience with some spiders. Maybe you've got some quite fast tarantulas like the pumpkin patch and things like that. And you're used to the sort of speed. 
and you would like to get a spider that's that is fascinating to watch watch them hunt down we saw them hunt down that prey how cool was that and what a takedown absolute awesome takedown so if you want a spider like that and you feel confident that you're going to be able to house them in a nice enclosure which is going to be pretty much escape proof um, that's why I recommend these because this has got a magnetic lid like this and there's no way that that spider is going to have the strength to lift that up I don't think any spider could this is made by the tarantula room so check them out guys I really highly recommend these enclosures because the lid's brilliant because you can lift it up and you can see right inside nice clear as day and the actual acrylic is crystal clear which is great and not uh, the disadvantage of it if you've got a it can look a bit um light reflection on there so it's all down to positioning when you're taking photos in one of these enclosures otherwise you're just going to get quite a lot of glare on your photographs if you're taking photographs of your amazing spiders and to be honest that is one of the things i love about the hobby and why i do it is to photograph and film them i'm not into handling them i don't want to handle spiders i i, I like to enjoy watching them capturing them in in photograph or a video just so i can enjoy uh looking at looking at the species let's have one more look at them before we uh yeah well done little guy enjoy your dinner so this is my uh featured species on the wolf spider this is the hogner uh, radiator uh i'd like to thank a few guys before i go as you know i always do i'd like to thank some youtubers i like to watch um first of all i'd like to uh thank um stephen huntsman for his help and advice on this spider before i got it he's been fantastic uh helping me out but yeah but youtubers i'd like to thank mark the spider guy peter webster spider mum 1978 scott's inverts rs designs incredible inverts and other animals um reptile innovations unusual pets ellie's bug babies eight wheels eight eight legs four wheels i always get that wrong greg i'm sorry buddy i'm just crap when it comes to numbers um <laughs> but yeah check out greg's channel unseen universe um dave's little beasties Bethany Spiders, Tarantula Dan, uh, Tarantula Tastic Enclosures, they're all fantastic channels, so if you get the opportunity, check them all out please guys, sorry if I've forgotten you out, don't forget Robbie's Talking Tees and Annie Arachnids, great channels, please check them out, so, I like to leave this little video here. I hope you've enjoyed seeing the uh, the wolf spider today. And uh, until I see you next time, look after yourselves. And I really hope I see you all soon.